Hi guys, we're going to be reading chapter 31 through 33. Finn. Finally, Finn exploded as soon as he stepped out into the hall. It was 10 p.m. exactly. Finn had watched the numbers change on the digital clock in his room. Shh, Chess said, falling into step with him and looking around nervously. Then he crouched beside Finn. Listen, Finn, it's really late for you to still be up. And this is second night right in a row. Maybe you should just go back to bed and get some sleep. Emma and I can tell you everything we found out in the morning. Except you wouldn't tell me everything if you thought it was going to scare me, Finn said. He could feel his lower lip start to jut out like he was just a sulky little kid. He forced himself to keep his lip in, stand up straighter, and stare Chess right in the eye. I want to help too. I, I have to. Chess's face was shadowed. It wasn't possible to see how he was going to answer, and Finn comes with us, Emma said, stepping between her brothers. We don't leave him behind. And then she ruined everything by adding, even if he falls asleep in one of those chairs down in the office, he stays with us. I won't fall asleep, Finn told himself. I'll never sleep again if that's what it takes for me to help find Mom. But he couldn't help himself. He let out a jaw-cracking yawn, and it hoped it was too dark in the hall for Emma or Chess to notice. The three of them tiptoed along, with Natalie joining them right at the top of the stairs. She held two laptops under her arms. Extra, she whispered, so we'll all have something to work on. Natalie isn't saying I should just go to sleep, Finn thought. He climbed down the stairs, walking along alongside her. But when they got to the office, the other three kids went right to work, and Finn wasn't sure what he should do. He stood in front of one of Natalie's laptops. He wasn't tall enough to reach it if he sat down. He stared at the Google drawing of the day, which seemed to be a bunch of men and women staring at a computer. It was probably something about computer history that Finn didn't know, but he wasn't going to ask the others. Mom should just tell me, he thought. If Mom wasn't here, he would have known I didn't know. If Mom were here... <laughs> she would have known I didn't know, and I wouldn't have to ask, and Finn couldn't let himself think about everything. It would be better if Mom was there. He sneaked a peek at the computer. Emma's working on. She had Mom's full letter of gibberish up on the screen, and she was muttering to herself, Substitution code? Is this the key part, maybe, of the code? Would it be numerical? Since Mom would know, I'd have to look for a number pattern. Hey, Emma, Finn said. Why don't you email me mom's letter? Then I can work on it over here. Maybe I'll see some clue to help you. It took Emma a million years to turn her head towards Finn. Sometimes she got like that when she was thinking hard. Hmm, she said slowly. Um, mom put some sort of coding on this letter so we can't email it anywhere or copy it or print it out. I already tried to email it to myself to have a backup copy and it wouldn't work. Maybe I could do some extra research to figure out how to unlock all that, but... Emma thought it was more important to work on solving the code herself. Maybe she was right. Finn didn't know much about codes. Finn turned around towards Natalie, who called up a picture of the Greystone's house on her computer. She tugged on Chess's arm. This is your address, right? She asked. You could have asked me, Finn wanted to shout at her. Instead, she just said quickly before Chess could answer. It is. Why? I'm looking around the area in Google Street View to figure out exactly how we ended up today. Natalie said. How does that help us find mom? Finn demanded. Well, if we find out who owns the empty house that's connected to yours by the tunnel, then maybe we'll know who might have, uh... Finn saw Chess put his hand over his mouth. Was Chess signaling Natalie to be quiet so she didn't scare Finn? Finn had to prove he was brave enough to hear anything. You think our mom was kidnapped? Finn asked, trying so hard to keep his voice from wavering on the last word. Maybe by someone from other than the house? Or by the criminal those boys were talk talking about? I don't know what to think, Natalie said, spreading her hands wide as if to show how much she didn't know. I can't find anything about some fugitive criminal being caught or about any kidnappings around here. I thought it might help to find the address of that house we were in. But there's no house on that street near you that matches what it looked like. That doesn't make sense, Finn protested. Do you know about Google Earth? where it's like you're down from above. Just look for the fences that were around the house. Natalie ran her finger over the touchpad, making the view on the screen race up and down the graystone street. All the houses there looked exactly like they should, totally familiar. I don't know, Finn. Maybe the Google pictures of the other streets were taken so long ago those fences weren't built yet. But those fences looked really old, Finn said, remembering the mismatched faded wood. Like, even older than me. Yeah, Natalie said absently, switching to a broader view of the neighborhood. 
Finn glanced towards Chess again, hoping his older brother would notice how Finn had had the whole conversation with Natalie, without falling apart at the thought of Mom being kidnapped. But Chess still had his hand over his mouth. Then, Finn saw what Chess had written in the search box on his computer. Andrew Greystone Obituary. Finn's stomach twisted. You're looking up something about our dad? Finn asked Chess, and this time he had no control of his voice. Why? What's an obi uh, obituary? Natalie finished for him, snapping her head towards Chess's computers. You mean the news story from when he died? Let's see. But Chess had already X'd out of the screen. Never mind, it was just something I wondered about, Chess said. He seemed to be breathing hard. You mean you're looking for who all is listed as survivors, so maybe you can find relatives you haven't met who might have more information about your mom? Natalie asked. That's smart. Uh, something like that, Chess muttered, but it doesn't matter. I can't find anything. I guess maybe eight years was too long ago. Try looking up some other relative, Natalie suggested. Maybe one who died after your dad? All our other relatives died before Chess was even born, Finn said. His voice came out too loud this time, as if even though they were soundproof room, he was trying to wake Mrs. Morales, who wouldn't really mind if she did wake up and came down and took care of him. But the other kids would be mad. Natalie and Chess kept talking about dead people. Finn stared at his blank computer screen, the picture of the unknown computer programmers, seeming to taunt him about everything he didn't know, everything he was useless at helping the other kids find out. I might as well be asleep, he thought. Or, no, I might as well be kidnapped myself like those kids in Arizona who started this whole mess. He knew it wasn't fair to blame the kids in Arizona for their own kidnapping. And it wasn't like that was even connected to Mom's business trip or her weird tax. But hearing the news of their kidnapping had been the start of everything weird. It had marked the first day that Finn felt strange about anything. I bet those kids were rescued a long time ago, and we didn't even bother looking it up, he thought. If I found out that they're home safe and back with their parents, well, that would be like proof that we're going to find mom again, too. Everything's going to be okay. Painstakingly, because he hadn't learned how to type yet, he keyed in Rochester, Emma, and Finn and added the words kidnapped and used. The first headline that came up said, Gastano parents beg for kidnapped children's safe return. Okay, that did not make Finn feel better. He reached for the laptop, ready to close out the whole screen and pretend he'd never seen it. But maybe he was too tired to operate a computer properly. His finger dragged across the touchpad, bringing to life a video that took over his whole screen. Instinctively, he slammed the lid of the laptop down, shutting off his view. But that didn't shut down the sound. Please, we just want our children back. A woman's voice cried out. Finn froze. On the other side of him, Emma and Chess snapped their heads towards Finn's commuter. computer. Is that mom? Emma asked. How do you have a recording of mom's voice? Chess said. Emma reached past Finn and lifted the laptop lid again. And there on the screen was mom's face. 32. Emma. Thirty. Uh, Does mom have an identical twin she never told us about? Emma asked. She was so glad her brain supplied the explanation because otherwise she would have had to believe she was hallucinating. The mother in the video on the computer screen looked and sounded so much like mom. It was hard to believe it wasn't mom. A version of mom, anyway, who had gotten her hair cut a lot shorter, so curled around her ears like a pixie cap, who had been out in the sun a lot more, her skin was tanner, maybe even a little bit more leathery. A version of mom who maybe lived in Arizona. You say that woman looks like your mom. She's identical, even, Natalie asked. She squinted at the computer, screen in front of Finn, her eyes scanning the words at the bottom of the news report. But she's the mother of some kids who were kidnapped way out in Arizona. Kids who have the same names and birthdays as us, Finn informed her. He turned to face Emma. If you think this is mom's twin, does that mean we have cousins with the exact same names as us? Can that happen? Mom never told us any of this, Chess asked. His voice came, in, came out sounding wild, like even calm, easygoing Chess was on the verge of panic. That day when we saw the news about those kids being kidnapped, wouldn't she have said they were related, that she knew them? There's a lot Mom never told us, Emma said. This was another fact. It, was a, it wasn't a comforting one. 
I don't understand anything, Finn complained. The corners of his mouth trembled, his eyes filled. Quickly, Emma slid her arm around Finn's shoulder. We'll figure this out, Finny, she said. We'll figure this out and we'll rescue Mom and those other kids will be found. And Chess wrapped his long arms around both Finn and Emma. But he didn't say anything else. Natalie took a step towards the three Greystones. They looked at all of their faces and took a step back. Mother, she said. Our mother had a logical reason for whatever she did, whatever secrets she kept, Emma said. I'm sure of it. And she left us a letter to explain. In code you can't figure out, Natalie said scornfully. Emma couldn't look at Finn to see if his eyes were still swimming with tears or if the tears had started rolling down his cheeks because if she looked, it might make her eyes flood with tears too. Really, there wasn't anything Emma could look at right now. She squeezed her eyes shut. Maybe. Maybe you and your family are alike. I don't know, royalty from some other country, Natalie said. Her voice was soft now, like someone telling a fairy tale. And your mom and her twin sister went into hiding to keep you safe in totally different states, but they gave you and your cousins royal names to keep the connection alive. That's why they're the same, and maybe Natalie meant her little fantasy story to be comforting. Maybe she thought Emma had gone through one of those little girl phases where she wanted to be a princess like all the other girls when Emma was in kindergarten. Maybe Natalie thought Chess and Finn had secretly seen themselves as knights and noblemen. First of all, Emma wanted to say, I dressed up as a scientist in a lab coat for Halloween in kindergarten when the other girls were wearing princess crowns. And secondly, do you think there's any ending to that story that doesn't put Mom and Finn and Chess and me in danger too? Emma couldn't say that in front of Finn. Maybe she wasn't capable of saying it aloud regardless. What does the kidnapped kid's dad look like? Chess asked. Did you find any pictures of him? Curiosity was enough to make Emma open her eyes again. Chess thought about their dad a lot more than she did. Emma knew that. For her, their dad was like the unknown in a math problem that you didn't have to solve for. She didn't know that much about algebra yet, but it seemed that sometimes there were X's and Y's both in a problem, and you only need to find the value for one of them. She didn't have a single memory of dad from when he was alive. She was gone, he was gone now and nothing would bring him back. Emma had mom and Chess and Finn and that was all she needed, except she didn't have mom anymore either. Apparently the Arizona kid's dad was still alive since she'd seen the word parents at the bottom of the computer screen. Chess began fast forwarding through the video of the mom twin, the mom clone, the mom double, the mom who wasn't mom. Emma hadn't really wanted to listen to any more of what sounded so much like mom's voice weighted down so heavily with fear and worry, but the sped up video made the resemblance seem even clearer. That was exactly how mom tilted her head when she was upset. That was exactly the way mom's face developed twin worry lines on her forehead. And then the worry lines erased when she was trying to sound more optimistic and cheerful than she actually felt. Maybe Emma hadn't fully understood that before there were times when mom was only pretending to look and act and sound optimistic and cheerful. The camera angle shifted in the video, zooming out, then zooming in again on a dark haired man standing next to mom who wasn't mom. The tagline below said, Arthur Gustano, father. He's not as tall as daddy was, Chess murmured. Emma wondered if he knew that he had said daddy, not dad. You were a lot smaller eight years ago, Natalie said almost apologetically, so it's not really. That man is only taller than his wife, Chess said, and our dad was a lot taller than mom. I know that from pictures I've looked at recently. Yes, but you don't actually know that the woman is the same height as your mom, Natalie said. I mean, okay, sure. You say she looks and sounds like your mom, but even if they're twins or just sisters, then... Shut up, Finn said. This was crazy. Finn never told people to shut up. He never sounded that fierce or hurt or angry. He turned his head side to side, peering back and forth between Emma and Chess, like where they were the only other ones in the room. Is that what our daddy looked like or not? Finn asked, his voice trembling. Chess? Emma said even though she'd seen plenty of pictures of her father before, she should have been able to answer. No, Chess said decisively. I mean, brown hair, brown eyes, yeah, that's the same or similar, but this guy's nose is bigger, his face is blockier, his hair is straighter. And listen, his voice isn't anywhere near deep enough. Chess even remembers what her dad sounded like, Emma thought. She felt a stab of something that might have been jealousy. The man on the screen inclined his, wife towards, inclined his head towards his wife. 
Nobody who hasn't gone through this could imagine what a nightmare this is, he said. How could anybody be so cruel? Our children are innocent. They, some heartless news reporter in the crowd in front of the man called out. But is there any reason you can think of as to why someone would be trying to revenge on you and your wife? Any reason that... There is no reason for any of this, Mr. Gustano snarled. Are you asking if my wife and I have ever done anything that would lead to our kids being taken? No, we are ordinary law-abiding American citizens. We're blameless. Our kids are blameless, but nobody could deserve this horror. My kids should be in school right now drawing pictures in art class and playing tag on the playground and and not he looks straight at the camera please if you can hear this if you have any humanity in your hearts at all don't harm my children just let them go let them come home he buried his face in his wife's shoulder she stared out at the reporters and then it felt like she was staring out at emma chess finn and natalie and anyone else who might be watching her gaze steady was so much like mom's that emma got chills this is all we have to say, the mom twin snapped, then gently guided her husband out of the camera's range. Emma shoved the laptop sideways towards Natalie. Natalie, you have to find out everything you can about those kidnapped children and their parents, she said. Finn, Chess, and me, we can't watch anymore. It's too hard. And we need all three of our brains for figuring out mom's code. Even mine, Finn asked. He sniffled. You really think I can help? Help solve this, Emma asked. Finn, I know we can do this together because we have to. There isn't any other choice. 33, Chess. Emma sounds like mom too, Chess thought. She sounds exactly like mom when she's telling all of us what to do. A memory tugged at Chess's brain, one that was so painful and from so long ago that he could only reassemble bits and pieces of it. Maybe it wasn't even real or maybe he just wanted to convince himself if it hadn't happened, he could remember lying on the floor, playing with his red toy car again, or maybe. Only it was it after they'd gotten the news that Dad had died. This was part of his usual memories about Dad's death. Maybe it was a few days later. Maybe he'd stopped playing. Maybe he'd been screaming and pounding his fists on the floor. Or just lying still, too sad to move. And then Mom was there picking him up. And he'd cry to her, I want Daddy back, make him not dead. Mom had murmured, oh, Chessie, I want that too, but we don't have that choice. It's not possible. She'd smoothed back his hair, hugged him close, and whispered. Other choices, though. The next thing that had happened was that Mom laughed. It had startled Chess, and somehow, even though he was only four, he'd understand that the laugh wasn't a happy one. He'd been too young to understand what a happy... What a la... <laughs> to understand what a laugh like that could mean instead, and that it had frightened him. He hadn't understand Ma understood Mom's next words either. What am I talking about? I have to do this. There isn't any other choice. There isn't any other choice. He heard the words the way Mom had said them eight years ago, the way Emma said them now, and the tone was exactly the same. Both of their voices were full of determination, determination fighting with fear, with a determination winning. It was that similarity that had Jared that had jarred loose Chess's memory. We're all like mom, Chess said dazedly. All three of us were all, well, not mom twins, but mini moms anyway. Emma Finn and Natalie all snapped their heads towards Chess. All three of them looked puzzled and Chess realized their conversation and moved on while he'd been stuck in the past. Stuck hearing echoes of mom's voice in his head. He flushed, realizing how dumb he sounded and he expected Finn to protest. What are you talking about? I'm not like mom, I'm not a girl. But Finn, for once in his life, wasn't rushing to talk. He just looked up at Chess so trustingly as if he thought Chess had figured out something big. He was waiting for Chess to explain. Ugh, maybe I just did figure out something big, Chess thought. Mom says we're the only ones who'll be able to read her letter, he said, pointing to the computer screen Emma had been poring over before they'd heard the voice like Mom's. He stretched out his arms so the fingers brushed five words in particular in the few lines that were understandable. Only the three of you. Because you're the one she's mailing that letter to, Natalie said with an annoyed flip of her hair over her shoulder. She's only sending it to you three, so... No, Chess said. Somehow he found that he didn't care anymore that Natalie had been a lip gloss girl in charge of everything at school and nobody ever challenged her. That's not what this means. She wants us to be the only ones to know what's in the letter. She put it in code that we can only read because we're the only ones who would know the key. 
You mean it's going to be something with math? Finn said glumly. Because Emma's a math genius. Mom knows Emma can solve any math problem. I can't help after all. No, Chess said again. Would he have to disagree with everyone until he got them to understand? He saw Emma recoil and tried again. I mean, yes, Emma's a math genius, but so are other people. If it's just tricky math answers, we could send it to the head of, I don't know, MIT, and he could solve this. Or she, Emma said. Do you actually know if the head of MIT is a man or a woman? I don't, Chess admitted. There are a lot of things I don't know. But ever since since Mom left, all three of us have been saying things like, Oh, Mom would never do that. And we know Mom loves us. She, the words stuck in his throat, but he forced them out. She would never abandon us unless she thought she had to. You're saying we're all experts about Mom, Emma said, finally catching on. And you think that's what's going to matter, solving this code. Chess saw Natalie start to open her mouth, and just from the way she twisted her face, he knew she was going to say something like, but you didn't know she was going to vanish, or you didn't know she had a look-like twin in Arizona? If that's even a twin, you don't know for sure. Or you didn't know she had a room that spins in a secret tunnel under your house? You're not very good experts. Chess was going to need to stop her from saying any of that. But before Natalie or Chess could speak, Finn said, I know mom smells like apples. Some guy or woman from MIT wouldn't know that. And the way he said it, Chess's heart squeezed. Finn could just as easily have said that mom smelled like sweat and grass and gasoline when she came in from mowing the yard, or like pumpkin pie when it was Thanksgiving, or rosemary mint shampoo when she'd washed her hair, but all of that would have been true about a lot of moms. Their moms did smell like ap their mom did smell like apples, even when she hadn't been around apples. It was just how she was. Chess saw Natalie shut her mouth. He stopped watching her and turned towards Emma. I didn't always pay much attention when you kept talking about codes all last winter, Chess said. But wasn't there one kind where you had to know a quote from the Bible or a line of poetry or some other phrase, and that's how you could figure out the solution to the code? You think that's some kind of code Mom used, Emma said, her eyes lit up. And you think the key to this code is some phrase that Mom says all the time that the only three of us would know? Yes, Chess felt triumphant, almost as if they'd already solved the code and found Mom. Then you don't actually need me at all, Natalie said, bitterness in her voice. Because I wouldn't know any of that. Don't mind me. I'll just be over here listening to parents sobbing about their kidnapped kids. And you think that's a tougher job than listening to Emma, Finn, and me talking about missing our mom? Chess wanted to shout at her. Or than being us trying to remember everything we can about Mom when we already miss her so much? But something weird happened. Natalie caught Chess's eye. It was almost like she understood what he wanted to shout. Sorry, she muttered. Chess felt a little dizzy. He wasn't used to having anyone understand him except Mom, Emma, and Finn. I'll start saying stuff, Mom says, Finn said excitedly. Is someone going to write it all down, she says. I think Captain Underpants is really funny too, she says. Sure, go ahead, jump on the bed. You only get to ki be a kid once, she's... Finn, Mom does not say you're allowed to jump on the bed, Emma corrected. She just pretends not to notice, but the thing about only being a kid once, that's a good one. I'll try it as the decoder. She reads for a piece of paper from Mrs. Morales' desk and started writing. What else can you think of? Everybody should know how to clean a toilet. Maybe? Or it's okay to mess up, nobody's perfect? Chess caught Natalie still watching him. He realized he winced at every mom fr phrase Finn or Emma quoted. I'm really sorry, Natalie repeated. Sorry that you think you have to do to dwell on everything like this and that we're going to find our mom, Chess interrupted before she could finish. It's going to work. It is, all right? And somehow, even though he hadn't meant it, this time he really did shout at her. All right. Thanks for listening today.